Would you say that you are a good person? If so, why? Obviously, we do not really think about the history of our morality very much. While we may back up the good things that we do with studies or our own emotions, what if we looked at history? Why do we believe in what is good or bad? According to utilitarianism, which is inspired from the word utility, our idea of good and bad originated from us, as a species, associating good with useful. For example, if someone did something that was good for everyone around them, then it is good because it is useful to society as a whole. Now, this is a very agreeable idea. When discussing what is moral just in the modern day, the best of people are seen as selfless, empathetic, charitable, and generous. While opinions may differ, it is hard to argue that many believe that a person with these characteristics are looked upon as being good people. They also follow a moral ideology known as slave morality. Wait, where did that come from? Today, we will be discussing the ideas of Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher and cultural critic who discussed the harsh supposed reality behind morality. Let us put your ethics into a different perspective. The Genealogy of Morals was a set of three essays Nietzsche wrote regarding morality and its true history. Before we explain, let's state what Nietzsche hypothesized. He believed that morality and the basis of morally good and bad acts were dictated by those who dominated history. Basically, history is written by the victors. Now, let's break this down. Nietzsche's primary evidence for this is by looking at long-standing languages such as German and Greek. When studying the dictionary of these languages, you can find some interesting synonyms for their words meaning good and bad. Some outstanding synonyms for these words were rich, brave, strong, weak, ill, and poor. Now, looking at these words, what social classes of people would you attribute these to? At first glance, for good, you might think of a knight in the feudal era of humanity, a warrior whose high rank grants him admiration and riches from the aristocrats. When thinking about the synonym for poor, you might think of the poor farmers of that same feudal system. Those people were laborers and were often poor. They were not warriors and due to their lack of nutrition and wealth, were more likely to become sick. Nietzsche points out how, with this perspective, it seems that good and bad were written by those who were on top of the social hierarchy. If you were of a high social class, then everything that you were was synonymous with good, and vice versa. So, how does this theory play out in the history of humanity? Well, Nietzsche explains this. As time went on, these definitions of good and bad remained, leading to a growing resentment from the lower classes. At the time of the Roman Empire, the lower classes consisted of the Jewish people due to the empire's suppression of the belief. This resentment manifested in the form of Christianity, where the weaker class was depicted as the virtuous, morally good class. Christian values align with the lower classes and very much oppose the definition of goodness set forth by the elite. With the moral battle, Nietzsche named the two clashing moral ideologies as slave morality and master morality. Now, addressing what the names suggest, Nietzsche did not generate these names to point out any advantages to one mindset. The names are simply created based on what class follows which morality. The aristocrats, or the elite, are the masters, and the poor, oppressed people are the slaves. Looking at the modern day, it is definitely provable how this might be the case. Christianity is the most popular religion in the world, and, coupled with that, many attributes of slave morality can be seen today. The people, who are community-focused, selfless, charitable, or followers of God, are typically seen as kind-hearted people. While there is an immense amount of disdain for people who may be wealthy, selfish, or of a higher class in general. So, according to Nietzsche, morality is, not only, dictated by social status, but also by an idea he calls resentment. Like the word it sounds like, resentment is similar to resentment, but instead, resentment manifests indirectly. In this case, the hidden resentment, or resentment, the Jewish people felt culminated in the creation of Christianity in order to combat the moral battle they were losing. Now, one might ask, if this is the true origins of what we consider as morally good and bad, then is this modern day interpretation of good truly good? Nietzsche sheds light on this, stating, Resentment itself, if it should appear in the nobleman, consummates and exhausts itself by an immediate reaction, and therefore does not poison. On the other hand, it fails to appear at all on countless occasions on which it inevitably appears in the weak and impotent. 
This position can be supported through the logic that if something as important as moral correctness is created because of spite, then what is morally good may not be good at all because of ill intentions for its support. So, with this context, it can be believed that our modern day interpretation of good may not be as good as we once believed. Of course, it can be argued that Nietzsche is potentially biased against the followers of slave morality due to the criticism he hurls at them, however, in the essay, Nietzsche states how there are advantages to both ideologies, but does pin resentment as the issue with modern day morality. You probably still believe in your ideas of right and wrong, which, of course, is completely understandable. At the end of the day, Nietzsche is a philosopher, and philosophy itself is drenched in theory and observation. At the end of the day, while Nietzsche's proposal is interesting, it may not be true. We all have our own perspective on what is good and bad, and it probably won't change anytime soon. Though, it is intriguing to think about how the good we see in ourselves may have originated from an older generation's hate. Thank you for watching the video. I have been away for a while. There's a long gap in between last video and this video because of life and a lot of things going on in it. I was very busy and I couldn't tend to videos, but hopefully now videos will start being more consistent overall. Uh, we're past a big busy point, so I think I can put more of my focus in on this. If you like this video, please go check out some of my other ones. I hope that every video is getting better and better, and I have some cool ones planned for the future 100%. I'm just getting back into it, so please go check out my other videos, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.